This video is a follow on from the last video in the Python tips and tricks playlist and in this video we're going to find the most frequently occurring value in a Python list. Let's quickly revisit the work we covered in the last video in the playlist on Python tips and tricks. This slide shows we're importing from the collections module this, where this is a class that we can make use of. On this line you can see that we have assigned to the hourly underscores temperatures this which is a list of the temperatures taken over a 24 hour period in a greenhouse. This line, well here we can see we're creating an instance of the counter class where we're passing in the hourly temperatures list and what this is going to do is to create a data structure to which this name is going to be bound. And on this line we print out that data structure together with the type of the data structure. This shows the output from the program. This was output by this here, the frequencies is being output and if we take a look at that we can see that it is a data type of this class. In other words the class has created a data type which if we have a look within it we can see we have a dictionary and the dictionary has one, two, three items and if we consider the first item in the dictionary which is this here this is a key and this is a value remember dictionaries are key value pairs and what this item of the dictionary is telling us it's saying that the temperature of 26 which appeared in the list has occurred 14 times this one is telling us that the key here which is again a temperature in the list has occurred five times and likewise here we can see that the temperature of 27 has appeared five times now this is what has been output due to this here and it's telling us the type of the data structure and we can see that the type is a class belonging to the collections module and it is of the counter class. Let's move on and consider this computer program which is the same as the one we've just been considering with the addition of these two lines. Before I consider these program statements I'd like us to return to this line where I created the instance of the list. Now I have chosen values to go in this list that will ensure that at least one of the temperatures appeared the most often and we saw that it was the temperature of 26 which appeared 14 times. Now I'll come back to why this is a relevant fact a little bit later in this video. Let's just remind ourselves what this statement did. It created an instance of this class and that instance will be bound to this name. So if you come onto this line and look here, you can see that I'm using that name which is bound to the instance created on this line and I'm sending a message to it and the message is going to invoke this method which is a method which belongs to this class. What I mean by that, the method is defined in the class but is now within the instance of the class. And this method here is going to return something for us and this is the name that's going to be bound to what is returned. Now this line is going to print out the data structure that was created on this line together with the type of the data structure. So the output we will get is shown here. And if we consider this line, well that's the line that was output by this line in the program and we've discussed that on the previous slide. Now this is the line that was output by this statement and if we have a look at the data structure that is created we can see it is here. And if we look at the output here we can see that it is telling us that the type of what we've just output is of type list. In other words this is a list and we can see that by the brackets that appear here. So this is an item of the list, this is and this is. And if we consider the items, and let's consider this one first, it is an example of a tuple. It's a tuple data structure and what we can see is we have effectively taken these key value pairs that appeared here and we have put them here as tuples. So in other words we have effectively converted this data structure here which was a specialized data structure that belonged to this class. It's what this class will give us and we've converted it into a list as you can see 
here. Now, as this is a list, we can look at each item in turn, and I'm going to look at this item, which is a tuple, as I've already said, but that's in position 0 within the list. This tuple is at position 1 within the list, and this tuple is at position 2 within the list. So we're talking about the indexes of the list here. This is at 0 index position, this is at 1 index position, and as I've already said, this is at 2 index position. Now, the program I've just considered I've got here again but now I've included this line and what it is going to do it's going to print from the most frequent data structure which if you remember was the list of tuples what's in the index position zero which will be the first entry in that list and this is going to be telling us the type of what's in the first item position of that list so let's consider the output from this computer program and you can see it here now we know why these two lines appear as they do and that's because we've talked about this bit of the program already what I'm interested in is what this line gives and you can see it gives us this now the reason we have 26 comma 14 here appearing in a tuple is because this position here is going to index position 0 of the list and this is the list and you can see in that position we have this tuple which is placed here and this bit of the code is responsible for telling us what the type is at index position 0 and we can see that that is of class tuple and we can see that this here in the list is clearly a tuple so this line gives us this output so let's consider the essence of this computer program this line has been responsible for creating this data structure this line here has been responsible for creating this data structure and this line we're simply showing what the item is at index position 0 within this list and we can see it's 26 comma 14 within a tuple and we can see that the class is a tuple Moving on again, you can see I've taken the program described on the previous slide and I've added these two lines. And I'd like to look at this one first. And what you can see is we have on this side a reference to index position zero within the list. And we know that that list contained a tuple that had 26 and 14 within it. And what this is doing, it's unpacking what is in the tuple at this index position. And it's taking the first entry, which is 26 which we know represents the temperature appearing in the list here and it's assigning that 26 to here this will take the next number within that tuple which we know to be 14 now this line is a print statement using the f string to output this literal string here most frequent temperature is this will place in this position in the output the temperature which should be 26 and this will output occurring and then in in this position we will output the frequency which will be 14 and then we output time so if we look to the runtime we get this and of course we've already discussed these but we can now see that this line has been responsible for producing this most frequent temperature is 26 occurring 14 times before I move on let's be clear what invoking this method has done it has gone to the data structure that this name is bound to and it's called from within that instance of the class this method it's invoked this method now what this will do it'll have a look at the data structure which is shown here and it'll put in order here which one had the most value this is 14 so that one goes first so what this does it orders the tuples according to the values that appear in the dictionary not the keys the values so we can see we have 14 5 and 5 and of course the temperatures go along this 14 was tied up with this 26 for example now you may be thinking well look if I consider this data structure I can see they're in the order I want them to be in any case but you can guarantee this when you're dealing with dictionaries it depends on what version of Python you are using I'll say no more about that but have a look at dictionaries and how they order their values to be on the safe side 
put this in because this will ensure that it will take the dictionary and put them in order of their values as can be seen within this list. You can see there's the 14, the 5 and the 5 and clearly the 14 has come first. So to summarise what we've done so far in this video, I've got the programme here again with all of the print statements removed apart from the last one which will tell us what the most frequently occurring temperature is. And what we can observe is this is the list. Here what I'm doing I'm creating an instance of this class. On this line I'm messaging that instance and I'm getting this bound to a list and on this line I'm unpacking the first index position within that list which we know is a tuple and temperature will get the 26 in this case and the frequency will be 14 and of course this will then output 26 and 14 so when the program runs we would expect to see this most frequent temperature is 26 occurring 14 times and it looks like the code has worked for us however if you remember close to the beginning of this video i talked about me contriving these values here to ensure that one of them in this case the 26 occurred more frequently let's consider the following slide I've taken the computer program that I've just discussed and I've altered the makeup of the list. If you look to the list, you can see that I have 25 appearing 8 times, I have 26 appearing 8 times, and I have 27 appearing 8 times. So which one of the temperatures occurs most frequently? And the answer is all three. So if I run this program, what's it going to do? Well, this is the output and it tells us the most frequent temperature is 25 occurring eight times. Well, that isn't 100% accurate, is it? It's one of the temperatures that occurs eight times. So it's one of the most frequently occurring temperatures. In fact, they all occur, in this case, eight times. Let's now consider this computer program where I've put all of the print statements back in so we can observe the output and discuss it. And if you come and look at the list, you can see I've altered that again. Here you can see I've got 25 appearing eight times. I've got 26 appearing eight times. Times. And here you can see I've got 28 appearing four times and 27 appearing four times. So if I run this program, this is the output we're going to get. And you can see that this line was responsible for creating the data structure that this line printed and we get this. So you can see we have 25.8, 26.8, 28.4 and 27.4. And those are the entries in the dictionary. And we can see that this dictionary entry and this dictionary entry both have the value of 8. If I come on to this line, this is where I've converted the data structure above to a list. And you can see in this position and in this position that the value is 8. This tells me that the first index position is 25 and 8. Eight, and it's a tuple and then of course I unpack the tuple on this line and I print out most frequent temperature is 25 occurring eight times which isn't wrong but it's not a hundred percent right is it because what this output has done it's only told me the temperature occurring for the 25 degrees C but we can see from the list that 26 also appears eight times so the program doesn't quite do what I wanted it to do however I'm almost Almost there and the almost there is as far as I'm going to go into this video I'm going to leave it to you as an exercise what would you do now because you can see there's two of the temperatures are the same occurrence in terms of how many times they appear in the list you may want to now consider the fact that these two will definitely be next to each other in the list if there's two going to be the same and those two the same are the biggest they will appear in this position and this position as you can see so you least can say that those that will be the values of temperatures that occur the most will be in the positions this side of the list so you might want to think of asking the question well I'll compare this value with this one and if they're both the same I'll compare this one with this and if they're both the same well I'd have a problem I've got three temperatures then that would be the same but if you compare this with this and they're the same then you need to make arrangements to output both of those if you compare this with this and they're different as you can see here then you needn't bother outputting this or this one or any other that might appear in a longer list 
It would have appeared that the program worked when I had the situation where one of the temperatures clearly appeared more often in the list. When you can see, as in this case, that we have two temperatures appearing, we only get one of them displayed. Anyhow, as I've already said, why not have a go to see if you can get this program to work correctly for all kinds of lists of data, where maybe lots of the items appear as frequently as each other. Um, have a think about putting your results in the comments below the video for the assistance of others. Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video.